Hi there, YouTube friends. How are you all? We're in my quilting studio and you get to see a different angle today because we're going to talk about my thread storage. You're seeing my pretty rack behind me. I actually was playing in it yesterday. I've had it arranged different ways over the years. And I actually went and looked up the, the rainbow sort of official, what is it, Roy something, anyway, red, orange, yellow, etc. And I rearranged the threads yesterday because I thought this is, this is fun to play in the threads and rearrange them, right? So let's see who's tuning in, Peggy. Marilyn, Cindy, Gail, Donna, awesome. Janice, Mary, Elaine. Janice is looking for rain, so quilting is the way to go. Did you guys see my reel a day or two ago? It would have been on Instagram and Facebook, and it was something like, if you keep quilting long enough, past dinner time, everyone will just eat cereal, and then follow me for more recipes. That's my kind of cooking right now. And I do love cooking, by the way, and I've been a huge family and people provider of food all my adult life but it's kind of fun right now in this stage of my life it's just my husband and I at home and we kind of share the cooking duties and I don't do that much of it anymore so I'm starting to love those sorts of recipes and uh do to do to do let's see what else Linda and Marie another Susan from Baja and SoCal Lillian Patricia Joanne Gretchen Mary Carla Lisa yay talk about threads yes so much to say about thread. Okay, let me introduce myself in case you're new. I'm Susan Smith, you're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. And I'm coming on live to YouTube each and every day for a full month, this is day 23, I believe, to talk about all sorts of different topics that surround the art and the skill and the practice of freehand quilting. Mostly I quilted a long arm these days, although I did before that learn to quilt, machine quilt first at a domestic machine, just at my sewing machine. And before that, in my earlier life, I was a hand quilter alongside my mom. So I've kind of done all those practices and I have a working knowledge of all of them. But these days I quilted the long arm, so most of my topics relate to that. And a lot of these morning chats are um, relative to whatever I'm working on that day, or many of them have been. And lots of them, like today, are in response to emails that you all are sending me in comments and requests. Let's talk about this topic. Thread storage was one of them. So today we'll look at both how I store my thread and also what I think are some of the essential colors that you want to begin with. So whether you quilt at your domestic machine or at a long arm, these are just some of the foundational, super useful, multi-purpose threads that I think you want to start with. And it's not brand specific, so we'll just talk about colors, not brand. Okay, Yahoo, look at you all tuning in. This is lovely. Alrighty, this is my thread storage rack, and you can see that it's kind of deep, um, a little over a foot deep, and so that I can put three spools back to back behind it. And I just realized you guys that I forgot to put my mic on and I'm just talking into my phone mic. So I'll try and stay close to the mic so that you can hear this reasonably well. But you can see that I've got three deep cones in each of those slots. And there are, I think, 56 slots in that rack. I acquired this rack purely by chance. I was traveling somewhere and I popped into a quilting shop and it was actually closing up shop and they had this rack for sale and I picked it up for $20. This is quite a few years ago. I have loved this rack. So 56 slots times three spools of threads is about 165 spools of thread on that rack. And it's relatively small. You can see the bottom of it. I've got it sitting on a kind of office type credenza with drawers. So it's not all that big. At different times, I've seen quilters that have this lovely pegboard wall and all their threads organized on there. And I've considered doing that. But when I literally worked out the space for how far apart I need to place my pegs to fit my cone, and then of course there's single cones everywhere, it actually took up so much room to do 165 or 200 cones of thread that I've decided to keep my rack. It's very space efficient. And frankly, it's probably good for me because when I start spilling over into 60 different colors and they don't all fit on there, I'm like, okay, some colors need to fall off the roster and not get replaced every time. So truly, I think 50 colors is plenty for any quilter um, to cover most eventualities. And occasionally I'll have a quilt come in that needs a different shade. And then I'll just order that one when I need it, use it up and then not go on replenishing it. So that's kind of been my method of keeping the guardrails on my thread collection by and large. I do have these drawers underneath right there and they are nice in this way. 
because I long arming is my business, I order thread bulk these days. That helps me to get a really, really good price on it. And so I order a lot of my favorite repeat colors. I order in quantity, so three or four or six or 10 spools of that color. Eggshell is a great example. Some of the mid grays that I use a lot are a good example. And then I keep the new spools in that drawer and I just keep three at the most ever up on the rack. So if you're at a more beginner level of your machine stitching, here's where I would start. One, for one thing, I do, which comment to make first? <laughs> which way to go? When you go to quilting stores, by and large, they will have machine quilting threads or embroidery threads. I use, I have the Isocord brand here right now. And it is 100% poly and it is specifically an embroidery thread. So a lot of quilting shops or sewing shops will have a broad range of these embroidery threads. And they're usually the smaller cone. Let me see. To give you a picture, here's the smaller cone that you see more commonly in quilting shops. This is the 5,000 meter cone and this is the one, yeah, 1,000 meters. 1,000 meters will generally do a whole quilt, but often not two. So in my opinion, for at least for your basic colors, step right up to the bigger cones, way more economical per yard, and you're not forever running out of cones. So even if I'm not a big time quilter, even if my spool or two of gray lasts me for a year and a half, I think it's still more economical and efficient than buying multiples of the little bitty ones. So that's the first thing, find yourself a source for the bigger ones. Um, I order right now directly from Amon USA who produces this thread, but you can also find sources. I started on eBay, for example. I just went searching for Isocord 5,000 meter cones and I found someone who was selling them, had all the colors available, had no minimum quantities and had free shipping and the price was good. Can't be beat, that's a great place to start. And of course, this is some years back now, but in my recollection, it was still something like 30 or 40% off what it is retail in the store shelf. So worthwhile. So that's a great resource and it's just two or three days away when you order. So start with some of those basics. And I think if you're gonna do any amount of quilting at all, it's worth having two of at least your favorite colors so that you've got one to be winding bobbins and one to be quilting with. Now you absolutely can wind as many bobbins as you think it will take for the quilt first but that's a bit of a guessing game. And until you've done a fair bit of quilting, it might not be a very accurate guess. So in my opinion, it's easier to just buy the two cones, at least of three or four basic colors and have one for loading bobbins and one for quilting with. And that's the most efficient way to use the thread and not have a million pre-wound bobbins sitting around with their tails spooling out as bobbins tend to do. Okay, let's go and say hello to a few people and see if there are any questions about that. I know I'm talking at a great rate this morning. I have a lot to do today, so I'm really hurrying. <laughs> okay, Eugenia, Dawn, Wendy, Alanette, M. Peacock from Uruguay. Awesome. Elaine, essential colors. Yay. Yes, we'll get to those. Karen, I can see to sew. Cataracts all gone. Well, that must be a happy day for you. Uh, Dawn, and how do you store bobbins? Oh, we'll get to that too, Dawn. Remind me if I forget it, please. Jana, my husband, Dave, Karen, uh, do, 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 same people, Vonnie. Lissa, Amazon also has Isocord in both 1,000 and 5,000. Good to know. Certainly, you can just Google it and shop around a little bit and see which has the better price. I will warn you, watch for the shipping because sometimes you'll find it at a really, really great price per spool, but then when you follow your way through the order, shipping is a killer because it is a bit heavy. So just be aware of that. Follow all the way through that shopping to, to find it. Okay. Let me put these back. Here's an example of my spool storage. And this was actually my son's great idea. He suggested, he's a golfer, so he suggested golf tees. Well, I went to like a restaurant supply place and got these super duper inexpensive wooden picks and they just slide down through my bobbin and into my spool of thread. So it does not keep the thread from unwinding you know, again, I find that if I wind them up all the way to the tails and leave them stored on the rack and they don't get bumped and moved, they seem to do fine. But I know there are people that have little silicone kind of split rings that you can put around the bobbins. That is certainly an option. But for me, I just stack them on the corresponding bobbin. What else? Um, 
So we were talking about how many th spools to buy, which I think is two. Let's talk about some of the standards for color. And again, I'm sorry about the mic. I should have had my other one on. Yeah, it's, I can't put it on quickly. So I'll just have to stay close to the camera. So I'll go get the thread and come back, okay? So for me, very bottom, very first thread that I think is essential is like an eggshell. It is so multi-purpose and works on so many light colored fabrics. See, I moved things around and now I'm a little confused. It used to be top left. This is my eggshell. It probably looks white to you in the screen, but there is whiter threads. I find, however, and I secord this is 0101 and it's literally called eggshell. I find that this works on white fabric beautifully well, but also works on the creams, the light yellows, the light pinks, the light aquas, the light greens, all the things. So this is my favorite. I don't even have white in my thread supply. This works perfectly well on white. It seems to be like a good blender and sort of pick up whatever it's laying on. So that's one of my favorites. Uh. I'm getting a few here. Okay. This is a new favorite and this is a little bit brand specific, but you might want to look for this in your favorite brand. This one in Ice Accord is color 0184. I don't know how well it reads on camera and I found this one by accident. I thought I was getting like a pale taupe. And when it came, it's actually a super, super pale silver, but this thread is the best blender, even better than eggshell that I have ever found. It looks green when you put it on green, light blue when you put it on light blue, and I use this thread like crazy. Of course, it's not all that long that I've had it, and the first time I think I ordered four spools, and look, this is the end of my spool, and now it's sitting all by itself because this is not enough for one quilt, and I need to make another thread order. But that aside, these are high, high, high up on my list of favorites. Shades of gray. So this is a fairly pale one, as you see. Um, not silvery, it's darker than that, but a fairly pale gray, a mid gray, which I use on a lot of quilts. I mean, this will play happily on purples, on royal blues, on browns, on taupes, on all kinds of places you can get away with the mid gray. Even sometimes on quilts that have multiple color, multiple fabrics and colors represented and you don't know what color to use, the quilt might not even have gray in it, but this is often a good blender to bridge all those colors. And then this is what I use in place of black. It's a very, very dark charcoal. I used to stock black. Not very many fabrics are truly, truly black. And I have found that this dark charcoal, actually much like the eggshell, I can use this on black, but also it looks better. It's not so stark against say dark blues, dark purples, dark greens, etc. So I've opted to jettison the black. That's not in my regular rotation anymore, just this very dark charcoal. So a light, a mid, and a dark gray. Now in practice, I have something like 10 gray shades. I'm a little bit, I don't know, probably overkill, but I do love matching threads to quilts. And you, you know how grays are. Some of them have blue tones. Some of them have warm tones. So over the years, I've branched out into more of those grays, and I have about 10 shades now, and, and some of them are very subtly different, but you certainly don't have to. These three would take you a long, long, long ways in terms of thread use. Okay, let's back up. I see the comments buzzing in. Susan Young, my machine manufacturer recommended Permacortex 40. It seems to work very well in my Eclipse. I'm delighted that it's less expensive than so many others. Are there any cons to using it? So I I don't know that specific thread. I do know that mine are 40 weight, yes. And I don't know if your Permacore is 100% poly. I'm guessing because it says core, maybe not. I suggest that you at least try any 100% polyester thread, not necessarily this brand. This is Isocord, but there's Wonderfill, there's Glide, there's I think Haberdash makes one. Um, Oh, there's lots of companies that make 100% polyester thread. They're so low lint and that makes such a difference. We're talking 10 times lower than threads that are cottonized, a cottonized finish or actually have cotton content. They just create so much lint. And at the long arm, when you're doing hundreds of thousands of stitches in a quilt, that can really make a difference. So try a poly thread. I have, there's lots of threads that will work just fine. So I have no negative comment about your choice, but I do recommend trying a poly. And Quilter's Apothecary is another good source for Isocord 5000 meter. 
Great idea, Anne. I've never actually purchased my thread from them, but I get my rulers from Quilters Apothecary. And that's Jamie Wallen. Lots of you will know him if you've been in the quilting world for a while. Great, great guy. So it'd be great to send him the business instead of maybe the big online stores. Lissa, sound is good here. Great. Hidden Bay, Jamaica. Awesome. Megan, what do you use to piece with? I've been loving Cotton Guterman for both piecing and on the long arm. Surprisingly low lint and it's on sale this month at FQS. Honestly, I beg to differ, Megan. I think if you compare the polyester to the Guterman, there's a massive difference in lint production. You may be finding that the Guterman is perfectly manageable for you, but I think you'd be pleasantly surprised if you try the poly, how much even better it is. What do I use to piece? You know, again, I'm the frugal queen. I Years ago, I found threads at um, the online company Connecting Threads. They're a catalog and online-based company. And they have 100% cotton that comes in, I think they must be 1,000 meter cones in a wide range of colors too. And I've used theirs typically. I'm starting these days to use finer thread for piecing. So I've got some 60 weight um, quilting thread. I've been using that and even sometimes 80. You might Google that and read about it. People have strong opinions about it. But the finer the thread you use, the crisper turn you get when you press that seam allowance and there's a, there's a line of thread running through the fold, right? So the finer the thread, the crisper that seam is. I know a lot of people love fine orophil for piecing with. So experiment. Like thread is a big old arena out there and I don't know everything about it by any means. So Peggy, I like how the bottom of the spool pops down and lets you hold the thread. I do too. And this most of the cone manufacturers do that. There's the odd one I've found that doesn't. But I agree that I can't, I don't have my hands available. Anyway, the bottom of the spool pops down, you wind the thread around it, pop it up, and it does hold the thread tail on your spool. I like that too. Diana, what was the name of the prior spool that picks up the other colors? I missed it. Just a sec. I threw it. <sighs> okay. I don't recall the name, but the number is 0184. That was this super light, silvery, taupey. It bridges the warm and cool. It's, it's kind of amazing, actually. 0184 is the color. Debbie, good morning from Wisconsin. I get my long arm tomorrow. Yahoo! I bought three spools of thread to get me started. I like your storage setup and realize I'm going to need more thread for sure. Yeah, but you know what, Debbie? Start with whatever you've got, and then as you do quilts, acquire thread for those quilts, and gradually it will build up. I certainly did not start with 50 colors. Actually, funny story about how I did start my thread collection. When I bought my first long arm, it was in 2015, and I went on to eBay because what did I know about where to find thread? I mean, I knew nothing about long arm threads and I had nobody to tell me. So I went on eBay and started hunting and I happened across this lady who was retiring from long arming and had a selection of isocord spools. I don't remember how many. It was probably 25 or so spools and they were partially used. So she kind of advertised they all have half or more, et cetera. And she was selling them off cheap. And then, then there's selection of Sorry, there's a selection of colors because she had collected them for quilting. So I thought, aha, she's pre-thought this out for me. Great place to start. So I ordered that and that was where I began. And they were mostly all winners. There was one kind of bright forest green in there that I still have eight years later. I've never used that thread on a quilt ever, but I keep it because it just reminds me of where I started because it's just such an ugly green. But there you go. Maybe it's an 80s green. Anyway, that was how I got started and that was my introduction to Isocord. And at the time, it didn't seem like very many quilters were using Isocord. It's an embroidery thread, so people use it in their embroidery machines all the time, but maybe haven't thought of it for quilting. Um, anyway, but this lady was, and I le learned much later that Leah Day uses Isocord too. So that was kind of my check of approval. Yep, I can do that too. So away we went from there. I've never been sorry. I do love it. What are the isocord numbers on the grays? Okay, this one is 3971. It's probably my favorite light one. I did pull my favorites, I did. 4073 is the mid. And the dark charcoal is 4174. You can get from isocord and I believe you have to buy it. It could be as much as 25 or $30, but I think it's worth it a card of um, the thread sample card, and it's actual thread samples. It's not printed bits. 
I did invest in that early on and I've never been sorry. So even if you choose to go with another brand, seriously consider their sample card because pictures don't do it justice. You go and look up one of these cards online and you will get an enormous range of colors on the same monitor or device that you're looking on, right? Because every picture is different. So the only truly way, true way to know is to have an actual thread sample. And especially if you're working on somebody's plum colored quilt and you're trying to match the thread, I mean, it's like shooting a dart into a hay bale to, to think that a picture is gonna match that plum colored thread. So I seriously advise investing in an actual thread sample chart. I've never been sorry about that. Uh, Peggy, Permacore is hard to find and has lots of lint. You know, again, I don't have a comment on that. I, I just know what I've used. Uh, but if it's not 100% poly, I guarantee you the polys will be better for lint. Hidden Bay Jamaica says, I use Aurafil for both piecing and quilting. And I do know other quilters that do that too. I'll be honest, the quilters who do are typically not, um, they do fewer quilts. So for example, I know one quilt designer that lives near me. Um, she designs and publishes patterns and she quilts her own projects and she loves Aurafil, which is great, but she probably only quilts two or three or four quilts a year, maybe six, you know? So to her, it doesn't really matter that little bit of lint. So if you love Aurafil or you're an ambassador for them or whatever, it's a great thread, but I guarantee you my 100% poly has lower lint. Lissa, what are the numbers on the grays and blacks you're showing? I answered that one. Angie, I just bought a Madeira thread to try for the first time, we'll see. I can speak to that a little bit, Angie. Uh, Madeira sent me a bunch of threads to try and I did. They all worked beautifully in my long arm. So in terms of um, usability and, and wear and response to the high speed of the long arm, they were great. Their, their embroidery threads I found worked super well, but their long arm quilting thread is a cottonized polyester. So the content is 100% polyester, but it's cottonized so that it doesn't have this shiny, slightly shiny finish. I found that to produce lint. I didn't love it because of the volume that I do. So that it might work for some. And I should say that in here too, the isocord and other embroidery threads do have a bit of gloss to them and not everybody loves that. So if you prefer less gloss, look for those cottonized threads. That might be just the ticket for you. But Madeira is a great thread company for sure. I think they're the largest thread manufacturer in the world. So they do know what they're doing when it comes to producing quality threads for sure. Marion, my Aurafil snaps so easily, I think I'm gonna have to bin the whole box of 12 spools. What a waste of money. Well, keep it for piecing, Marion. Like it's perfectly satisfactory for that. But I think what you're running into is the high speed that we quilt at, whether it's at your domestic or at your long arm. It's a way higher speed typically than you sew at. So you need a strong thread and that's the beauty of the polyester. It's built to withstand that. Hidden Bay Jamaica, wow, good idea. I use 50 weight, I'll try finer thread. It's worth a try. It's absolutely worth a try. Linda, so you'd rather use poly for quilting than cotton? Personally, yes. Personally, yes. But again, be aware the poly usually has that bit more gloss. Um, and if you don't love that, then it might not be the best answer for you. But in terms of uh, stretchability, in terms of strength, and in terms of how it handles high speeds, the poly wins every time in my books. Laura, what a timely topic for me. Great. Linda, are there tension issues? Do you mean with the poly, Linda? Poly or cotton, no. Like I personally tend to get my thread that I love and get my tension kind of dialed in and I seldom have to make very significant adjustments at all. And certainly that's true with the poly. I don't, it's not vastly different than if I put in a cotton of the same weight, it seems to respond the same machines might be different. Like there are people who say, my machine doesn't handle X, Y, Z, or my machine loves X, Y, Z. So you might have to figure that out a little bit for yourself. I have not found tension issues with the poly or with the cottons, honestly. Linda, would Omni poly wrapped poly cord thread be considered 100% poly? Yes, it would be. I'm not familiar with that specific one. This one is specifically called a trilobal polyester, meaning there are three strands that are twisted together. So that might be different. And I don't know the details on that, but it still would be 100% polyester fiber, right? So it's gonna be strong. Gail, I love Isocord Mary. Everybody hit that like button. Yeah, please do. If you're enjoying this, hit the like button and the subscribe and share with your friends. 
Stitching with the Sister Lees. Wow, I use Isocord for machine embroidery. I had no clue I could use it in my long arm. Absolutely. So you've got all the colors if you do embroidery. You know that fully. So yeah, absolutely. Use it in your long arm. Sandra's asking the number on the mid gray again. Good thing I still have it in my hand. Uh, 4073, Sandra. <laughs> Sharon, I've been using and loving Omni 100% polyester. Yep, Omni is another great thread company. Katja, hello from Germany. Stitching with Sister Lee's. I have Madeira embroidery thread as well. Yeah, and it should work absolutely fine too in your long arm. They have many of the same qualities, embroidery machines and long arm machines. Uh, Marion, the Aurifil breaks for piecing. Interesting. I have not used it a ton for piecing, but people sure do rave about it an awful lot. T. De Jager, De Jager. Not sure how you say that. How about a finer needle along with that fine thread for piecing? Have you changed your needle size to get that fine seam? I think that's probably wisdom. I don't do a ton of piecing these days, so I don't have massive experience on that. But I will say this, most thread manufacturers like Superior Threads or Aurifil Threads on their website will have some really good charts that will show you if you're using this weight of thread, we recommend this range of needle sizes. And that's a really good benchmark. But yes, you do want a needle size that's appropriate, whether you're piecing or whether you're stitching at the long arm. <laughs> Dave, this is my husband. I use clear fishing line for piecing a hook to my fishing pole. Does that count? Don't recommend quilting with fishing line and that's a fact. Teresa, love my glide thread and my card. Yep. So you've got this watch card too. They're awesome. Susan Young, Permacore is poly wrap, but I'm in the five or six quilts a day bracket. So for the difference in cost, I'm okay with cleaning a bit more often. And good for you for weighing those variables and saying, this is what suits me. Good for you. Oh, Susan, five or six a year, not a day. I was wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> Teresa's a fisherman too. Peggy, I've been using Omni for quite a while. I started with Permacore and now I'm trying Isocord. Yeah, you know, it's worth experimenting. Um, when you find one you love, I, I tend to just stick with it. And for me, I need to keep reminding myself every so often, try something new because thread manufacturers, like that's always an evolving process too. 15 years ago, quilters would say, oh, don't piece with 100% polyester thread or don't quilt with it because it's so strong, it'll cut the cotton fibers in your quilt, etc." You don't hear that anymore because polyester thread has, has been refined and it has evolved and it is a great choice nowadays for quilts. Uh, Darlene, I recently purchased an HQ Moxie and was told that my machine does not play well with Aurifil. It was nice of the dealer to tell me. It is, but I'll be honest, I wouldn't necessarily take his word for it because I don't think it's brand specific when they have preferences. Like it sometimes is a machine. They're a bit, they're like a used car. They get their, you know, sometimes you have intricacies and idiosyncrasies. That's the word I'm after in a machine that's not necessarily brand specific. Gail, what's your opinion on So Fine? I love So Fine. And it comes in fine weights too. And a lot of people will use that in the bobbin. And I've kind of fallen into that lately. I've got some um, Deco Bob, which is from Wonderfill, and it's an 80 weight. Is that ever nice in the bobbin? Because your bobbin holds a ton of yardage. I love it. And Peacock, I love the Aurifil for piecing. Never had any breakage and been using it for 15 years. See, that I hear that more often. People that love Aurifil, I really do. Few of you chiming in on that. Ruth, I use poly thread on my Juki 8700 and it works fine. Nancy, the environmental impact of polyester, which is a petroleum based material versus cotton is almost always ignored. It's a good point to bring up Nancy. I feel like, for example, Madeira, if you read on their website, they're a pretty environmentally conscious company. I feel like companies have taken big strides towards addressing their production, production processes to be to have less of an impact on the environment but it's absolutely worth doing your research on that and making the choice that fits you for sure angie love orophil do to do, do karen my moxie likes omni my dealer recommended it i want to try isocord soon great how are we doing for time we're almost at half an hour you guys this is crazy sharon did you go over your thread rack and where is it from yes i did ever so briefly sharon but i'll tell you again my thread rack is accidental. I don't know that you can find one like it, but perhaps. I popped into a quilting shop that was closing their doors and they had their racks were all for sale. And I nabbed this one for 20 bucks quite a few years ago. And I love it. It holds 56 different colors and it holds three full cones deep. 
So that's 165, 168 spools will fit on that. And space-wise, it's quite efficient. I suspect that maybe if you went into a quilting shop and asked them about a thread rack, you might be able to find something similar. Again, I mentioned earlier, I considered doing the whole um, pegboard type display on my wall. When I measured out the spacing of the spools and how much space of wall it would take to do 165 spools, I found this to be much more efficient, so I've stuck with it. Okay, do, 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 do. Uh, Debbie, one thing I realized in seeing your setup is that I'm going to need more than the five bobbins the machine comes with. Probably true, Debbie, although I tend to match my bobbin thread to my top thread or very closely, but there are lots of quilters who don't. The deco bob that I mentioned earlier, for example, does not come in a wide range of colors, but there are people who still just have that range of perhaps several grays, right? And they just use that in their bobbin no matter what. So again, you might experiment with that. It takes good tension to be able to use something a bit different in your bobbin, but it's a possibility, absolutely. But I think five is gonna be cutting it close. Certainly I have a lot more than five bobbins. <laughs> Okay, you guys, there's lots of comments coming in, but we're getting long. I just wanted to remind you, I've got a free workshop coming up this Saturday. Yep, the day after tomorrow. And it's called Freehand Quilting Demythified. Five myths that tie freehand quilters in knots and how to break free of them. So I am talking and I'm bringing photos and stories to share. For those of you who have wanted to be a freehand, free motion, freestyling quilter and feel like you can't for various reasons, you don't consider yourself an artist, you stand and stare at the quilt and don't know what to do on it. Whatever those reasons are, I'm taking some of those five top myths and really debunking them and showing you how to work your way through them step by step. It's entirely possible if you want to be a freehand quilter to do it. So I'm gonna show you that. So I have put a link for the workshop in the description right below this video. Also on my social media feeds, both Facebook and Instagram, there's posts going out every day this week. And in those, you can just comment workshop and it will automatically send you a little wee link. That does not work here on YouTube. You gotta hunt for it in the description though, okay? So if you've enjoyed this, please do give me a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. Add your comments and questions. I'll do my best to get back and answer them later today. And if you have topics you'd like to hear discussed, email me, info at stitchedbysusan.com and I'll put them in the roster. So thanks you all for joining me. I appreciate it so very much and we'll chat again tomorrow.